Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and we're going to talk today about your customers because we're all customers. And there's also a level of standard that we want and desire, which is why a lot of us shop on Amazon, which as Amazon sellers, we can get into the mind of our customers, we can make more sales. And it has nothing to do with indexing or ranking or PPC or how all of those things go. It first and foremost, before you write a listing, before you pick a product, you have to understand who you're selling products to because there is a person, a human being with an intent to purchase behind that phone or that computer or that listing or that product. And so I want to talk to you guys about understanding your customer and what their wants and needs are so that you can sell more product to them. And there is a specific reason that I wanna do this is because there's a lot of people that have been coming to me lately and they say, oh, my, my stuff won't sell or I've you know maybe picked the wrong products or I don't know what to sell and what to pick. like. People just want this list, this top 10 list of things that Amazon, that people are buying on Amazon. And yeah, we could give you that. Like actually Amazon gives you that. You go to your Amazon category page and you pick something and you sort by the top 100 bestsellers and there are lists in order from one to 100 and beyond of the top 100 selling products in different categories. This is not how we find products to sell on Amazon. And here's why, because all of those niches, all of those products, all of those things have probably multiple items. And in the top 100, you're not going to sell those products. So you're like, oh, well, how can I make the most money on Amazon? Well, here's the secret. You ready? This is like mind blowing. Like you cannot wait to hear this secret, right? Here's the secret. Sell what customers want to buy. Oh my gosh, groundbreaking, right? I mean, drum roll, can I get like a, a, a high five, a standing ovation for that? No, <laughs> here's the reality. What do customers wanna buy? Sell what they wanna buy. Guess what? What do you buy? That's something to start with. What does almost everyone buy on a regular basis? That's something that we, it's, it's really easy with data. Here's the deal. You can sell product widgets. You can sell products all day long. But if you really figure out what the customers are wanting and needing, who they are and what makes them tick and what makes them pick up their phone and click on Amazon and make a purchase, then the sky is the limit of what you can sell. So when you, when you attempt to sell anything at all whatsoever, it's really, really important to understand who is buying that product and what their expectations are. So we know Amazon customers because we are Amazon customers. And so Amazon's a little bit different from say your eBay customer or your customer that walks into a brick and mortar store like Walmart and wants to buy something. Your Walmart customer is different than your Target customer. Your um, Tiffany and company customer is different than your Pandora customer. That's different than the um, jewelry section at Kohl's, right? So we have to think about the who, what, when, where, why, and how of the products we sell. Whether you sell private label products or you're picking stuff off for retail arbitrage or thrifting or creating your own brand or making bundles, you have to understand who, what, when, where, why, and how of your customer in a sort of brief outlined way so that you can sell them the best products. What are their wants and needs and desires? Now, today is an example of, I had a client today and was talking with her about her specific bundle that she had and she was noticing that there was a significant drop in sales. And so as uh, one of my coaching clients, we go through together and we look at the, the partic particular problems that might be happening in the listing. And we realized that like, the, it wasn't a problem with her listing indexing. It wasn't a problem with her price. It wasn't a problem with all of the items she had in her bundle. The problem was increased competition because she figured out how to find a specific niche customer for a specific niche thing. And as we looked at increased competition, we realized that more and more people were bringing products to the table with that, those particular keywords, but they were missing something they were missing something that she was indexing for, which was a non-food gift. 
And what I'm saying there is that's a very niche item because there's lots of gifts for women, right? Gifts for women out there, gift boxes, gift baskets, uh, all different kinds of, of gifts. But non-food gift for women is significant because if you're sending something from Amazon, knowing your customers that are giving gifts all throughout the world and even the nation, non-food gift item is a way to know your customer. You realize, well, I want to send something to, you know, Aunt June over here and she's in Texas and I'm in Michigan. Um, and I know that there's a there's a weather difference. And, you know, if I send her something with chocolates and it ends up on her front porch, it's going to be a sloppy mess when it arrives because the front porches in Texas this time of year are probably 100 degrees or more or even the mailbox. So, considering the who, what, when, where, why, and how of selling a gift box or a bundle or anything on Amazon, know thy customer, okay? So if we don't know who we're buying from, how uh, who's buying from us, how can we understand them and meet their needs? Did you know that products, creating products, selling products, whether you're curating your own bundles and subscription boxes and things like that, or you're selling single unit private label products, or you're literally just buying from wholesale catalogs, there's all kinds of different mo business models you can be into. But knowing your customer is the most important thing that you need to do in any niche. This is why in the Wholesale Bundle Framework, we teach you that step one is picking a category knowing your knowledge bank. How much easier is it to sell a product to someone or talk to somebody about something that you have tons of knowledge about? Even if it's something you don't necessarily like, you might have a ton of knowledge about certain things. Maybe it's, you know, like when my dad was had cancer before he passed away, we became very knowledgeable about his type of cancer and the different products and the different side effects of the medicine and what he was going to need to um, feel his best during those hard times. And although it's not something I'm passionate about, <laughs> it's something I know about because I went through that experience. That also helps me understand what my customers are going to need if I'm going to sell products to them in the cancer wellness space. So your knowledge bank about the subject matter of what you're selling is important. Now, you don't have to know everything about everything. A lot of people are like, I don't care about that. That's fluffy stuff. I just, you know, I want to know if it's going to make, what's the ROI on it? How fast is it going to sell? How much money is it going to make me? Well, that works short term. That's like a bandaid on a bullet hole. If you do that for a time, you will constantly scramble to get the next best trending product. You'll end up with a lot of leftovers and extras and uh, things you can't make money on because uh, those is what we call low hanging fruit. But if you truly understand your customers and you understand the Amazon customer and you understand the niche or the category or genre of products that you're selling to those customers, it makes a difference. Now, when I say what to sell on Amazon, people expect some sort of list. They expect me to sit here and tell you, and I can. I can absolutely do this. And so can Google, by the way. <laughs> um, just in case you're curious, um, you can find all of these this information that I'm giving to you on Google, most of it. But there is something to be said about why people shop on Amazon and the reasons. And it's not just guessing. There's been survey upon survey upon survey, and I'm going to give you some survey results today because I think they're really, really important to understand who you're selling to. So it's not just about a list of products. Oh, sell electronics, sell gift cards, sell um, books, sell jewelry, sell home and kitchen, sell grocery. Like there, we can sell anything, literally. You can sell barbecue grills on Amazon. You can sell car parts. You can sell uh, hardware. You can sell home decor, you can sell granola bars, you can sell your homemade soy candles, you can sell almost anything. Of course, there's some restrictions. You can't sell like um, marijuana products and things like that. Although some people do and get away with it. We don't know how. Um, maybe they were grandfathered in or something like that. But those keywords are still there, but like it's not allowed. Eventually when it goes completely federally um, acceptable, then there'll be a lot more products available and things like that. But there's certain restrictions and certain restriction categories and things like that. But you can pretty much sell almost anything. So it's not about finding products. I mean, I can sit here in five minutes and help you find a million products. Go to mommyincome.com forward slash 100 
and watch the trade show stocking video and you literally at your fingertips have a million products that you can start selling ASAP. Finding products to sell is not generally the problem that people struggle with on Amazon. They really struggle to take the time and energy that it takes to understand who's buying these products so that you can better serve them. Now, in the marketing and the business world, this is all people focus on. They don't focus necessarily as much on the product as they do getting the product to the right person. Because the idea behind products and services is to meet a need or solve a problem. Someone out there has a need or a problem, and your product is going to solve that problem or that need. So we got to discover the problems. You got to discover the needs, the desires, the wants, and they're not always trendy type things. This is where new inventions even come up with, that, that, are, that, come, that people come up with these new inventions because they realize there's a hole in the marketplace. It's like somebody, I'm looking for this item and can't find it. Someone else is looking for this item and probably can't find it. That is the opportunity, the gap that we get to fill with products and ideas and bundles and subscription boxes and things like that when we come to Amazon, what we sell on Amazon. The answer to what do you sell on Amazon is what problem are you solving or need are you meeting for who? Whose problem are you solving or need are you meeting? So you can answer that with your bundle. You can answer that with, that's what I'm going to ask you. So how, what products do you sell in here? What need do you meet or um, solution do you provide for your customers? I'm like, oh, I make them laugh with my funny t-shirts that I create on merch. Okay, that's a need or, or a desire that a customer has. So it doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be physical, philosophical. It does not have to have some, you know, four paragraph explanation. It can simply be, I need a 10 foot HDMI cord because my TV and where I need to plug it in, in my computer or my monitor or my laptop, I want to sit at my bed in my bed and hook my laptop up to my TV that's 10 feet away and I want it to be on this cord. So that's what I want. Um, that's the problem or the need that I need to meet with a 10 foot HDMI cord. I mean, it's not complicated, but if you can define that, then you can write a listing that speaks the language of the person meeting that need or solving that problem. That's how this works. So whatever product you have, it's not about those products and whether or not it will sell. You can use tools and use Amazon and use Google and a couple other tools that I recommend like Merchant Words or Helium 10 or things like that to find out more specifically how many people or the supply and demand of products that's just one piece of the puzzle. But the piece of the puzzle that everyone wants to skip is the most important one, which we're talking about right now, which is who is your customer. So let's define our Amazon specific customer because eBay customers are different. Like we said, Walmart, Target, all those different things. Those are different style customers. They buy for different reasons. They buy uh, different products and at different price points and all kinds of things. They have different intent, but your Amazon customer has specific intent. We, first of all, we are our Amazon customers. Sit down right now or think about this. Give yourself some space to think about, do you shop on Amazon? And 99% of people probably, okay, not 99. I think it's like 82% of um, US households have like Amazon Prime. That's huge, you guys. That is the major majority of people across all ages and genders and races and cultures and everything. Amazon is like universal, right? So why do you buy on Amazon? I'll tell you why. Speed, variety, convenience. Now, I've been saying this for years, especially with the wholesale bundles. Why do people buy on Amazon? Well, speed. They get it in two days. Free shipping too. Variety and convenience. You pick up your phone from anywhere. You could be in the doctor's office. You could be at a stoplight. You could, hopefully you're not texting and driving and shopping on Amazon. Um, but you could be in your living room. You could be at soccer practice with your kids. You can be wherever, however, at work on your lunch hour, at work, not on your lunch hour, <laughs> whatever it is, you can search on Amazon 24-7, 365 if you have a phone or a computer or a tablet or, you know, who knows. Convenience. 
the number one reason, according to Ad Lucent, there's this um, blog, and I'll put these in the show notes if you guys want to look this up or whatever. I love statistics and charts and things like that to see that. But like the number one people, the reason people shop on Amazon, according to a survey in 2021, is product selection. Product selection. It's not. Second was fast and free shipping. The fact that you can get most things in two days or even one day. I got something in one day shipping the other day. Didn't even cost extra. It literally came the next day. And also the, the, the number one is product selection. Number two is free and fast shipping. And the third one is trust. People know and understand that if they hate a product, if it's broken, if it if something is not as described, whatever it is, that Amazon will basically unapologetically and for almost any reason whatsoever, which that's a whole nother episode, um, we're, refund your money. You know, they're like, oh, you don't like it or doesn't fit or this and that. They'll just take it right back and they have a whole return policy. People trust Amazon. They also trust the product reviews. So some people, especially if it's like something that costs $100 or more, or it's an electronic or it's something that people like to read reviews on vacuums and appliances and, you know, all kinds of things. People read reviews. Clothing. Does it fit right? Does it sew right? Is it cheap? Does it feel nice? You know, those types of things. So people are looking to buy things and they look at reviews, trust, free shipping, but product selection, friends, don't miss this. Other people are talking about PPC and how to do this and this strategy and that strategy. Don't miss the simple things. Product selection is the number one reason people go to Amazon. Why? Here's why. Because no matter what you do, if you go to a brick and mortar store, they only have so much shelf space. Even Walmart, even huge stores like Walmart or Target or, you know, these mega big box stores, they still have a limited number of square footage. They can't carry everything. The reality is, is that Amazon absolutely can. And it's why they're getting what? What is it like 50? No, what is the percentage here? 40 Amazon captures. This was another statistic in this, this um, NY New York Times said this. Um, Amazon captures 41% of every dollar spent online in the United States. 41 cents of every dollar spent online is Amazon. And the number one reason the Amazon customers themselves who took this survey are saying that they go to Amazon is product selection. What does that mean for you? How do you want to understand? You want to sell more on Amazon? You want to make more money? Bring more products to the table. If you see something carried on Amazon and it's only sold in red, Find another color and sell it in that color. Because if someone wants red, they'll probably want black or white or blue or green. Who knows? Variety is the spice of life. Amazon makes it possible to bring every known product in the universe to the online space if you want to do that. Product selection. What does this mean for bundlers? What does this mean for anyone coming new to Amazon? It means there's room for your brand your product, your box, your gift, your variety pack. There's room. You know why? Because there's unlimited space on Amazon. Unlimited real estate to bring as many products to the table as you want. You know, the thing about that is if you bring 10 products to the table and you get four winners, you got four winners. That doesn't mean you, had, you have six products that didn't do very well or something like that. That's a possibility. The opportunity is there to see what's available. We don't have limited shelf space. So product selection is really important. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amazon has said, Amazon customers have said they want product selection. They want variety. They want different ones. So if you ever gone to the store and you're like, oh, well, I really like this. You know, if I go to my store, y'all know I've told this story like a million times, but I'm telling it again. I love like hot pepper jelly, right? And I fell in love with hot pepper jelly like several years ago, many years ago. 
And it's not something that I can just find around here. I have to go to like a specialty store, like a Williams Sonoma or like something like that to like find this hot pepper jelly because there's one, they, they have one kind at my grocery store. And now my grocery store, multiple grocery stores around here. Um, but I usually go to Meyer, which is like you're similar to your super Walmart if you're not around here. Um, only it's way nicer. In my opinion, the, the Meyer is a little nicer than that. Um, but it's, you know, it's not, it's, it's like just a big, huge store, but their selection of jalapeno jelly is zero. They have like one hot pepper jelly and they don't even carry that anymore. So where am I going to find this? Where does everyone turn, even if they're going to their normal places to buy stuff? They're going to Amazon. Yes, that's the first place I look when I go to the grocery store and they're out of something that I have it. I'm like, I still want this. And now I either have to go to a whole nother physical store or I just go to Amazon and be like, oh, well, they have it. It's a little overpriced on Amazon, but I still want it. So add to cart. You are an Amazon shopper and that your, your Amazon customers shop very similar to you, most likely. Now, we all have different styles. Some people are super, super price conscious. But if you're price conscious, you're a price conscious and you're going to shop around everywhere. But you are still going to try to find the best price on Amazon first. Why? Because it's cheaper and less expensive and you don't have to deal with different customer service and you trust them. You know it's going to come in a couple days. You know that if you have problems with it, you can send it back in and or send it back and get a different one or get your money back. Know your customers. What do they expect? What do Amazon customers expect? They expect speed. They expect trust. They expect easy returns. They expect things to be brand new unless otherwise noted. Amazon has ascended partly because they let us third party sellers sell there. The reason why Walmart and all the, well, Walmart's up and coming because they're allowing third parties as well, but other places have fallen by the wayside because Amazon has leveraged the power of 2 million Amazon sellers to bring new products to the table. They're not doing all the work. They're maintaining the back end and the structure. But the reason they're able to offer so much is because we are doing the work. Third-party sellers. This marketplace greatly increases the assortment that's available. That's what's important. The variety. So every time you sit here and go, oh, well, is there really room for my item in here? Do some simple math. What is the percentage of products versus the demand? So say, you know, I've done this one before with like these these uh, desk organizer sets or like, you know, spices or, you know, things like that that are like plentiful on Amazon. But is there room for another? How many of you just take a moment and think if you are in a safe place and you can, you're not driving or you're like walking the dog and might like, you know, trip over something. Look at your phone right now. Pick it up and look at the last 10 things that you bought on Amazon. Could you resell any of those things? Would you want to? Are they super, super popular, high niche, high competitive? Have you ever searched on Amazon to try to find something that, and you looked for maybe four or five pages and you still didn't find the thing that you were looking for or the exact thing? Like, oh, that's kind of what I was thinking, but not this. Your customers are doing the very same thing, which also means that there's room for variety. Now, if you set up your listings right and you use the proper keywords and you're selling something that has demand, you're just filling in the gaps. Larger retailers outside of China are competing all with Amazon and they're realizing very quickly that the variety that they offer is nowhere close to what Amazon is. That's why they're getting 41% of the online dollar spent. People spent more than $610 billion over the last 12 months. I can't, I can't even figure out how much that is per hour, per minute, per day. Like, billion, $610 billion on Amazon. These are the customers you're dealing with. They have wide open wallets and they're buying everything from granola bars to HDMI cords to patio sets to barbecue furniture to car covers, you name it. What gives them confidence is reviews, 
return policy, and of course the selection is what brings them back. How many times have we gone to Amazon and most of the time we can find what we're looking for there? We might not find it locally or in the store, like, oh, I can't get those here. But on Amazon, usually you can. Now let's understand why Amazon customers will pay more for something than going to a store or another website. Well, it's that selection. They already know Amazon has it. They don't waste time shopping. Why would someone pay more for something on Amazon, even if the store does have it? It's because they don't want to. It's fast and easy. And they do even subscribe and save. That's what I do like on my with my contact solution. Yeah, I can get it from the store. We go to the store once a week to get groceries and things like that. But like, it's just a no brainer. I subscribe and save. I use this every month. It runs out about the same amount of time. I subscribe and save and it just is delivered. And I get what I need and it's fast and easy. Same thing for our customers. They already know Amazon probably has it. That's why they go there first. That product selection, you see? They will pay a little bit more as well because it's fast and easy. How many of us on a regular basis pay a little bit more for something because it's fast and easy? My son and I just had this debate the other day. We were talking about the convenience store and the gas station, which my daughter actually works at. And he wa- we were out of milk and he wanted cereal or whatever he was. And he's like, I'm just going to run to the gas station and get it. I'm like, literally, you're going to pay $6 for a gallon of milk at the gas station. Go a half a mile farther to Kroger and get milk and come right back. He's like, uh-uh, that's just a waste of time. The gas station's right there. I can literally go there and be back in like, you know, five or six minutes. If I go to Kroger, it's going to be 15 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, but you're spending like four more dollars or three and a half more dollars. Like time is money. And he's like, yeah, time is money. And I don't want to spend time on that. So I'm spending six. And then he ended up going and spending five dollars, I think, on a half a gallon of milk. I was like, oh my gosh, go a half a mile more. But it's the time versus money. Some people just don't care. Their time is more valuable to them, aka my son. (laughs) Um, And he's very impatient as, as well. So he's like, let's just do this. Like, so he ran to the gas station, got the gallon of milk. No, he overpaid, didn't care because his time was worth more to him than the money he was spending on the extra couple dollars to go that far. So we all, you know, some of us will literally, you know, everybody has this person in their life too, right? There's, there's the Benjamins of the world. It was just gonna be like, forget it. It's convenient. It's fast. It's easy. I'm going, I don't care if I'm paying extra. I, I'm paying for my convenience. That's exactly what he told me. I'm paying for my convenience. I'm like, great. That's worth it to you. And then my other child, <laughs> she is way more frugal and way more price conscious. And she literally will go out of her way, use Gas Buddy, get the cheapest gas, which she always goes to Costco anyway. But like the idea there is she will save the money. She will go out of her way. And sometimes Benjamin says to her, I mean, this is the debates that happen in my house, y'all. <laughs> and he's like, you literally will go out of your way 25 minutes to save $5. He's like, is that even worth it? You know, and they have these debates. And she's like, well, over time, I'm saving this much money and this much money here and there. And like, you're spending it on this and that. He's like, Yeah, but, you know, my round trip takes 20 minutes and your round trip takes an hour. Well, excuse me. What you have to figure out is what you value most in those situations. But when we're talking about our customers, your Amazon customer usually values their time more than their money. They're willing to spend extra on a premium. They pay a yearly fee to Amazon already. But the fact that it's going to save them time knowing, like, I'm at the grocery store. I, I see that they're out of my jalapeno jelly or whatever. They don't have it anymore. I can easily add that to my Amazon cart in about one minute and get on with my life. And it will deliver at my door and I'll get everything I want and everyone lives happily ever after. That is your Amazon customer. They're not always shopping around. I mean, some people are price conscious and yeah, like they're going to check everything. But to go to another website and then put your credit card information in and do this and that, do you trust them? And when are they going to ship? And, you know, what happens if there's a problem? People factor that in very quickly in their mind and then realize if Amazon has it, I'm buying it from there because speed, convenience, variety, trust. Now that we know who our customers are, we need to find out what they want top revenue categories. Now that we know who, we know that they're, they want speed, convenience, variety, product selection. They're going to spend a little bit more to get what they want, even if it's a few bucks. It's worth it for them to just order it from Amazon. The top revenue creating categories on Amazon right now, 2022, home and kitchen is at the top of the list. It is the, one of the fastest growing categories on Amazon. The other one is electronics. Electronics meaning 
gosh, everything from, and I don't mean like small appliances, although that is um, actually on the list as well. Um, but electronics, meaning anything and everything electronics from phones and microphones, anything that plugs in. And that can go from anywhere from musical equipment and podcast recording equipment to um, computers, laptops, phones, accessories like that. That is a category that has all of those things in it. Um, automotive is also another fast growing category on Amazon. Think about it. If you're doing car repairs or you've got like windshield wipers or wiper blades or your um, bulbs, you know, your AutoZone, your your um, O'Reilly's, you know, different places like that, they're going to have a decent selection because they're a very specialty auto parts store, but they can't carry everything. So the best place to carry those items would be Amazon. Because you can get a specialty, like if you need a head, like if you need a light bulb or a headlight for like a 1987 Chevy truck, you're not going to find that at AutoZone, right? I mean, they, that was a, that's more of a specialty part. But Amazon is a place where you can offer that if you have that in your catalog. And it can even be uh, merchant fulfilled if you had an auto shop. Like I'm just, all these ideas outside of the box, there's so many things that people just won't take the time. To list on Amazon because they think, oh, no one's going to sell. Or they're thinking about the top 100 products. But literally, if it's searched, people will buy it from Amazon. If it's not listed on Amazon and no products are found, that is a really good indicator to bring those products to the marketplace. Sports and outdoors. Think about that. Sports and outdoors. Say you live someplace in the middle of nowhere and you're doing sports and outdoors and you're like, oh, okay, well, I need some football equipment you know, running just to Dunham's if they have one or Dick's Sporting Goods or something like that around you. Like it could be far away. They could only have one. And then you're subject to whatever selection they have. So what you look at is what they don't have. What don't they have at Sporting Goods stores? Carry those products. What are they missing? Where are the gaps? That's what you fi figure out how, what to sell on Amazon that sells well with very low competition. Finding the gaps. So how do we capitalize on all of this information? How do we know we have all of these statistics? 41% of people, four, 41 cents of every dollar is going to Amazon. Like, what are we going to do about this? How are we going to figure out what to sell our customers? First of all, figure out what they want. Use your knowledge bank. Figure out what you know about because you know the problems. If you have a hobby or a job or anything like that, that, you know, there's always problems in life or there's always solutions you need. And so there's always a product to either create or order that solves that problem. It solves the problem of whatever it is, your hobby or, you know, the job that you have. It's like, oh, you know, that, that's why there's so many desk accessories or organizers, because we have so much stuff. Then we have to figure out how to organize the stuff and store it properly and things like that. Problems, issues. Well, I've got this great thing, but how do I store it for the winter? Mm hmm. Thinking about those things. How do we solve the problems? Well, first of all, bring new products to the table. Amazon told us, our customers have told us, product selection is the number one reason they shop there. Specifically, bundles. Bundles save your customers time. It's time, money, convenience, variety. Now, bundles work because when we understand our customers, we can give them the proper products we need to solve their problems and meet their needs. It's speed and convenience plus the variety built right in. So the most important thing to remember about bundles specifically and about bringing things to the table is to solve a problem or meet a need. Solve a problem and keep it simple. Sometimes the problem is that you're decorating your house and need new curtain panels because the old ones don't match the new decor. That's the problem we're solving or the need that we're meeting. The who, what, when, where, why, and how of your bundle. So I'm challenging any of you guys now that have bundles, whether they're selling well or not, 
Can you define an avatar, a person? Can you write down briefly the who, what, when, where, why, and how of your bundle? Now, we don't have to get super complicated. Sometimes they overlap um, of that, like the how bundle. Okay, well, how do you use this? Uh, you take the cord and you plug it in. Okay. I mean, we don't have to get that specific, but it's like, define for me who this bundle is for, who do you visualize searching for it, how are they going to find it, what keywords are they typing in, and who are, are, they, are they giving it to themselves, or is it just something they everyday use, is it a gift item? So think about this, define your bundles. And if you can't sit here and look at a bundle and say, oh, who is this for? Well, it's a newborn baby gift set, it's for the baby. Well, the baby's going to type in Amazon newborn baby gift set? Is it for a baby shower? Is it gender neutral? Is it for a boy or a girl? Uh, is it yellow or pink or red or something? Who, what, when, where, why, and who's buying that? And for what? For a gift for the new mom? For a baby shower gift? Define the who, what, when, where, why, and how of your bundle. Define your avatar. Who is this for? Understand who you're selling to and you will sell more. And then when you're writing your listing, Speak to that person. What are the words that they're using? You know how many times I see on merchant words when I'm looking for different words and looking for different keywords and search terms, how many Amazon customers type in like funny gifts for men or cheap gift baskets for girls. That is the customer that you're search that, that's searching. Now, this is just something that we have to really consider. We can we can sign up for Merchant Words and for Helium 10 and for Jungle Scout and AMZ Scout, all of the tools and bells and whistles, but it's not going to do the thinking for you. It will search the data once you do the thinking. But that's something we have to realize about it. Like a hammer is just a hammer until you pick it up and use it for something. It's a tool. So with all the other tools, they're not going to do the thinking for you. You actually have to type in a word in order to search on Merchant Words or Helium 10 or wherever. So you have to do the thinking ahead of time. So this is what I'm doing to help you do the thinking ahead of time. Pick up a catalog, digital or paper. Pick a page and just say, okay, what's the who, what, when, where, why, and how of any of these products? Who wants this? Who's looking for this? What type of other products are they looking for? What are the products on the page? How can we find them? Are they on Amazon? Are they on Google? Are they anywhere else? What are the key words that people are typing in for this? What is the main phrase? Who's buying it? What is she, he or she thinking about? What room is it for? All the things that will help you build a better listing, understand a customer, what they want. And then you can start doing comparables after that. You have to actually think. There's a lot of data mining that can go on with lots of software and this and that, but eventually you have to put some thought and, and, and creative energy into it. Not a ton, but enough to understand your customer is looking for specific things. And on Amazon, as much as, yeah, we come across things and Amazon suggests different stuff that we end up kind of down the rabbit trail of clicking and things like that. But the initial Amazon search that your customers are doing is always with intent. When I open up, when I press that app button on my phone to look for something on Amazon, the first thing I do is open it up, open the search box and type in what I was just thinking. How many of you guys still do that? That's how we search on Amazon. So I'm sitting there, I'm looking for this. I'm looking for a specific backpack for my daughter for school. And I'm like, back pink back to school or pink backpack for girls you know whatever and then you discover products based on amazon search results and maybe people who bought this also bought this or you know here's other options in this category and they love to suggest based on what you search but first you still have to search and that is where you capture the most customers and understanding what they're searching helps you write your listing better and pick products that are going to be within that search. Meet a need or solve a problem. Define your avatar. Define the who, what, when, where, why, and how of your items. And then bundle. Almost every product, most products can be bundled with something. If you sell a patio table, you could actually sell a patio table with a couple different table covers for it if you wanted to, or a patio table with chairs or with an umbrella or with matching cushions or something. Like there's almost everything is bundleable. 
It's a whether or not you can actually describe it and get it in, in the keywords and get what your customers are searching for. Now, if you are, le- if you struggle and you struggle with ideas, you're like, oh, well, I'm, you know, good at pick, you know, I'm not good at picking products. I'm not good at ideas. I don't come up with this stuff. I don't know what needs to meet or problems to solve. Well, I have a mini course, a four um, part mini course about bundle ideas. That's a year's worth of bundle ideas from evergreen to holiday bundles, which are fast approaching, like crafter bundles, and even spring and summer. So I have a whole four-part mini course that you can take that's all bundle ideas. So if you're out of bundle ideas or you're just like, I just don't know where to start, what to do, get the mini course because that's really going to help you. Mommyincome.com forward slash bundle ideas to get the mini course there. There's four. It's a four-part series. Um, and it's it's just something that could help you with a bunch of different ideas. Um, and it can spark more ideas that you have to kind of bring something to the table. But worrying about whether or not there's room, there's there's tools for that. You can check that. But don't count yourself out because, oh, I see 10 different varieties of this. Well, if 100,000 people are searching for something and there's only 10 options, you're either forced to pick from those 10 options or abandon ship and think of something else. Like how many times have you gone, like how many medicine, cough medicines are there out there? I mean, you can go to CVS or Walgreens or something like that, and you literally see an entire aisle of options. So think of that with your virtual self on Amazon. You have all kinds of bundle options and ideas. I have mommyincome.com forward slash bundle ideas, and that will help you both with evergreen and holiday and all kinds of different bundle ideas. There's no reason for um, not having a bundle ideas because now you're aware of this course and what's out there and there's four different courses. So that's four hours of bundle ideas, straight up, just straight up bundle ideas. No fluff, no this, that, no real teaching. It's just talking through the bundle ideas with visually watching me talk through bundle ideas. That's what it is. You can see all of the bundles. You can see where you can kind of buy them and different stuff. Um, But when you're choosing your bundle components, you really want to keep a few things in mind. This is just like your mini bundle 101 here. Number one, who, what, when, where, why, and how. What Before you even purchase any products for your bundle, I need you to write down a piece of paper or digitally or whatever. Who will buy my bundle? What will they use it for? Literally just write who, what, when, where, why, and how on a piece of paper. And before you purchase any products for your bundle, define that. Even in the simplest terms, define it. Because if you can define the problem you're solving or need you're meeting, it's way easier to find products. Now, if you're kind of wondering, well, I'm not sure who's going to buy this, then You have to be a little bit, uh, you need to refine your search so that you can clearly define, I feel like this type of person is going to be buying this product and they're going to use it in this way. Then you have no business buying it, no business bringing it to the table. Just because you think it's cute or fun or you like it does not make it sellable. Supply and demand and defining who, what, when, where, why, and how of your bundle is going to help you. Okay. When choosing your components, again, first and foremost, the who, what, when, where, defining your avatar, who's going to buy it. Then less is more. You want variety, but you want to be able, three to five items is really the sweet spot in your bundle. Thinking about your packaging, your price points, I'd say $20 and up. It's not worth a ton of effort if you can't sell it, you know, $20 or more. I mean, so really try to think about your bundle retail price of your bundle, what you're going to charge your customers at $20 or more. And profit point, I'd say like five bucks or more per bundle. Unless you have a prep center doing the work and you aren't doing hands-on, then feel free to make your profit whatever you want to. Because if I all of mine doing is curating the bundle and then ordering the stuff and sending it to the prep center and then they're doing all the work and sending it all into Amazon and I'm just doing the back end and maintenance, um, that's worth more to me. I'm willing to take less per unit because I know that I'm not handling all of the parts and pieces. That's worth it. Notice how when I said all these things about bundles, I didn't say anything about worry about hijackers, worry about people ripping off your hard work. No, we don't start there. 
We start with your customer and what they want and what they're searching for and the variety they want and the, the styles and attributes of your products. Nothing to do with whether or not someone is going to jump on your listing eventually. That's later in the process. But first and foremost, we don't look for stuff to be like, what is something no one else is selling so that no one else is going to, you're going to have competitors. You literally are in retail. <laughs> like everyone competes. That's what we do. So just consider all of these options, all of these, these ideas, who, what, when, where, why, and how. Know your customer. Understand they're going to pay more for your items. They don't have to be the same. You know, if you're buying stuff at the dollar store and flipping it on Amazon, you can't start, you can't be like, oh, well, I paid a dollar for this, so I better just charge a dollar. You're losing money. Like, that's not how this works, right? So you're going to have to get comfortable charging a little bit more for your items. Understanding your customers want speed and variety and product selection and convenience. They're willing to pay for that. Define your avatar. Define who what, when, where, why, and how of whatever product you're selling, whether it's a bundle or not, you need to know who's going to buy it and what problem or need it solves for them. Otherwise, no one wants it. What do they need it for? Is it just like a little novelty item? Yeah, there's some novelty items. People intentionally search for those. Gag gifts, novelty items. So those still have a need and a want that can be filled. So when you're considering and thinking about all these things, before you even look at products and digit uh, data and widgets and things like that, define the who, what, when, where, why, and how of any product or any service or any anything that you're bringing to the table. Once you understand your customer and what they want and need, it's very easy to provide them those very things. Y'all, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to any other podcast. I appreciate you're listening. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. If you haven't left me a review, I would absolutely love your feedback. All of it. DM. You can leave comments. You can leave reviews. Even if they're bad, I can handle it. You're like, oh, this is the worst podcast ever. Still leave a review. No, please don't leave that. I would be sad. No. In reality, I really appreciate your time and your energy. I know that this hour is precious. We only get 168 hours a week. I appreciate that you spend one of them with me. So if you could please just leave a review, even if it's just like, good podcast, five stars. I would love that. Um, thank you for listening. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.